it is great to see you. Thank you all for coming. And uh, yeah, great to see everybody here today. I'm looking forward to opening Futures Day later on. Of course, today is a really good day for young people to have a look around the air show, ask loads of questions, and, uh, and really be curious about what opportunities are, are out there. So uh, great to see you all. Well, Tim, we're absolutely thrilled and honored that you're here at Farnborough International Air Show. It only seemed like yesterday that you were here two years ago at Futures Day, and obviously so much has happened since then, especially with you spending 185 days, 22 hours, and 11 minutes in space. But I think what everyone wants to know is what's next for you? What's, what are you going to be doing next? And will you be going back into space anytime soon? Yeah, thank you very much. You know, those last 11 minutes were probably some of the most exciting as well, uh, coming down in that Sawyer's capsule. Um, what happens next? Well, at the moment, I'm really uh, just readapting to being back in Earth's gravity, which only takes a couple of days before you actually feel, feel good. But it'll actually take me about six months, maybe a year, to fully readjust in terms of bone density. So there's loads of science going on. Um, I've had muscle biopsies, MRI scans, ultrasounds. Uh, plenty of blood taken and really trying to investigate how the body has changed with six months living in microgravity so that we can understand it and, and move forward to lunar exploration to those Mars missions uh, and understand how the human body is going to be able to cope with those. So that's what I'm really working on at the moment. But you feel okay? Was it strange to be back? No, I feel absolutely great, um, and it's, it's amazing how quickly you get used to just being back on Earth. I mean, uh, I did spend 43 and a half years on Earth before going into space, so it's my natural environment, of course. So, but it is, it's also amazing how quickly the body just gets back to normality, gets back to business. So what was the scariest part of the mission for you? Well, actually, I mean, we, we got off to a, a pretty apprehensive start with the docking. Um, and as you'll be aware, uh, I mean, the launch was incredible. It was so exhilarating, but it went very smoothly. It was a, it was a textbook launch. The rendezvous went great as well. Um, and we came into our first docking and at just 17 meters away from the space station, which is very close. You're well inside the solar panels at that stage. You're just, uh, you know, coming up to the docking port and you've got uh, other spacecraft next to you. Our uh, Soyuz vehicle had a thruster malfunction, and so it, the automatic system aborted and we backed off to about 90 meters. And it was at night, and at 90 meters you really can't see very much, and certainly at night the spotlight doesn't go very far. So Yuri had to take manual control, um, bring us back into the space station. Um, and that, that was a, an apprehensive first few minutes, because that's always very difficult when something like that, like that happens, you have to manually fly the spacecraft in. Obviously things got sorted. What do you miss about space? Um, there are so many things I miss about space. The obvious answer to the question is just the, the view, of course. Every time you go to the window, every time you look down on the planet, it's, it's magnificent. You always see something different that amazes you. Uh, also, being in weightlessness. Weightlessness is a wonderful environment to live and work in. It's so much fun. Uh, so I certainly miss not being able to, to float around. But more so than that, I, I miss the, uh, the operational environment. Uh, you know, it's, it's a brilliant place to live and work. It's a real privilege. And every day you're being challenged physically and mentally, working with brilliant experiments, cutting edge technology. Uh, you've got control centers all around the world who you're touching you know, every single day, every moment of every day, working with them. And you might only work on an experiment for uh, you know, 30 minutes in one day, but that is, you know, you're, you're very aware that scientists down on the ground have worked years for that your 30 minutes worth of work up in space. And that's a very privileged position to be in. Now, as you can see, there are so many people here who you've inspired um, and are listening and hanging on to every single word you say. What message would you give these guys right now? Uh, I, would, I would say, basically, if you're looking to, you know, forward to having a, a career in science or technology, then you know, use, like I said, use the experience of others to help make you make the choices that you need to make. Um, I was very fortunate. I was very passionate in aviation. I became a pilot at a very early age, and uh, I joined the army. And I had 18 years of flying with the British Army. Um, I did have a scientific background, both A levels, and I didn't actually get my degree till I was 30 years old. But I, I then completed a, a bachelor's in uh, flight dynamics. But I think it's very important to try and find out what it is that you want to do and that you're passionate about. Don't think that you have to follow any particular route to getting somewhere. Uh, there are, you know, my colleagues in the astronaut corps come from so many different backgrounds, um, be it medical uh, doctors or teachers or pilots or scientists or engineers. And also, um, one of my astronaut colleagues, you know, he joined the U.S. Air Force 
to try and become a test pilot because he thought that was the best route to becoming an astronaut. Didn't make it, thought his, uh, you know, his astronaut days were over. And uh, he flew ahead of me as a medical doctor. Um, he went and re requalified, retrained. So there, is, there are so many routes to doing things. And um, I think it's most important is that you just find out what it is that you want to do and follow that path and, and things will work out. Tim, thank you so much. Applies to me as well, even now. Thank you.